guys, welcome back to part two of image processing in Kotlin. Last week, we got the hang of how to grab these pixels and do something with them. Today, we're going to expand by creating our own filters using operational pixel manipulation. For all practical purposes, we're going to be talking about monochromatic images. If we try to write filters using colored pixels, it will prove a lot more difficult to work with RGB values as opposed to just black and white values. In order to create our own image filters, we need to have a solid understanding of pixel math, or binary operations. Binary operations are the bread and butter of computers. You can compute operations on the binary values of 1 and 0. Your three most basic binary operations will include AND, OR, and NOT. AND is the first binary operation which can be signified by the two ampersands in the middle. The rule for AND is that in order for the output to be true, both inputs must be 1 in order to return 1. The second binary operation is OR. For OR, one or both inputs must be true for the output to also be true. Last but not least, you also have NOT which is essentially the inverse of all the operations. So you could inverse a single value, or you can inverse the result of an expression. Now that we've talked about binary operations, let's go ahead and implement them. In the project, you've seen that I've already added the two images that I wish to work with, and I also added the writable image versions of them. Let's go ahead and remove these make dollar calls. When I have a set of functions I like to write, I usually like to comment them so I don't forget what order we're supposed to be going in. And of course, we're going to start with OR. We usually follow our fun with the name that we wish to call our function. And if we have parameters, we start with the name of the parameter we wish to reference followed by the type the parameter is. If you have a return value for your function, you're going to need to signify the type that you expect to return as well. And so we're going to start with if our input A is black and the input of B is also black, then we're probably going to want to return true. Or in this case, true is also 1, which is also black. Otherwise, we're going to return false or 0 or whites. And it looks like we have a little yellow squiggly line. A really cool feature about IntelliJ is that if you right click that if sign, it can help you refactor to better Kotlin practices. So I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of that. And we actually have our return value right here. In Kotlin, you can actually take if and else statements and turn them into one line, which is pretty cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and one up the suggestion, and I'm going to add to that myself. Well, that looks really nice. I think it looks clean. Let's go ahead and go on to the AND function. And of course, we're going to have two values, which are of type color, and we're going to return a color back. If you remember, in order for AND to return true or black, we need both values to be black. So in only the case that the first color is black, and the second color is black, we're going to return true or black. Last but not least, we also have our not function, which of course should be the easiest. We're just returning the opposite of what we expect. So if we have a single input of a color, then if it evaluates to black, we're going to return white, and if it returns to white, it's going to return black. You might have noticed that we only wrote functions for individual colors. This isn't actually going to be usable with our image types. What we're going to have to do is use our writable image types and then obtain those individual pixels and then apply primitive filters to them. So we begin to write a function for or filter, which will take two pixel readers as inputs. You might be wondering why we're not putting in the writable image. The pixel reader class actually allows us to grab individual pixels by their colors. So like before, we're going to insert our pixel readers and we're going to go ahead and 
iterate through the 2D matrix by going through the individual rows and columns. You'll notice that in my for loop, I wrote zero until with. In Kotlin, until means that we're gonna go from zero to with minus one, not the actual with value. Finally, we're gonna have a result writer, which is going to write pixels onto an image. You'll notice that I put the type that I expect in front of the variable, but this is not necessary in Kotlin as Kotlin has pretty smart type inferencing. So we can go ahead and remove this. And then you can see in IntelliJ it already recognizes it as a pixel writer. We're going to use the result writer to take the pixel colors that we read from A and B, and then we're going to apply the OR filter to them. The result of the OR filter is what we use to set the color with the result writer. Sometimes it's really, really good to walk away from what you're doing and then come back. Because when I did that, I noticed that I made a couple of mistakes. The first being that I actually left out the type pixel writer in my signature, so I went ahead and added that. I want to apply this function to my image views, but I actually don't need two of these writable images. I really only need the image itself, so I'm just going to remove that, and I'm going to apply monochromatic the 1 and monochromatic 2 pixel readers for the OR filter. We're going to go ahead and run our function, but before we do that, let's check what images we're going to use. When we run the OR filter on both, the expectation is that the image should return a summation of all the black pixels. Next week, we're going to go over how we can apply the other primitive filters to our images, and we're even going to use higher order functions to be able to recycle all those primitive filters to be fed into a single function. See you next week.